Welcome you, Delilah. Could you please uh, tell us where are you from? I'm from Spokane, Washington. Okay. What were the things that you struggled with and how did you end up at the Race to Deliver conference? Um, in December, that was 17th of December, my son, I have a son who paralyzed because he was drowned in a swimming pool and had brain injury. So that very day, he was lifted into a wheelchair from his bed because um, he could not do that himself. So they used a wire lift to lift him out of um, his bed. But they were going to put him back to bed. Sometimes he sits for six hours or seven hours as a therapy exercise he's been going through. That very day, I was just about to leave him after praying with him, just at the entrance, I saw two young uh, uh, nurses coming in to do that. Then I felt something that I should go back into the room and watch what they were going to do. So I did that. Apparently, I was going to healing room class that evening. I was running late, but I decided to go back. So I listened to their voice. They put a sling under him and raised him with a hair. I saw him being hung up, so I just then decided to take, pick my bag and leave. Suddenly, I turned again, and I realized that the sling they put under him should have been crisscross, which they didn't do it. Then he slipped out of the sling up and was about to uh, drop with his head down. So I dashed under him, and he landed on my hand to prevent him from uh, landing with the head. So as you saw him falling from the slipping from the sling, you ran towards him to catch him, and he fell on your right shoulder and your arm, correct? Yes. Then one of the nurses rushed out to call for help because we were not able to uh, raise him up again. Then part of the sling hooked his neck, surrounded him. So I put my hand under him to raise him. So I lifted him, and the second lady removed the sling from uh, strangling his neck. But as I was doing that, I felt a sharp pain in my wrist, and then my, the shoulder of my arm here. So that was the second time I had that within that period. After that, I just took my bag. They wanted me to go to hospital. I said, no, I was going to class, and I'll be prayed for there. But after three days, I had to rush to, back to hospital, and then uh, they gave me these links I was using, and then I had therapy for three months instead of six weeks because I wasn't getting any better. So after this accident you rushed to the hospital because now you could not move your hand, right? How did it affect your daily life? What were the things that you could not do anymore with your hand and your shoulder? I couldn't do anything at all, not even to bath, even to wash my face. This thumb could not do anything in pain and the whole arm. So a Christian sister was bathing me and doing everything for me until... And after two months, she couldn't do it again because she was also busy. And I have to do things, but in very severe pains. Then I heard that Apostle John Chi was coming. Uh, before we go into the healing testimony, uh, healing story. Now, you are holding papers, right? Yeah. Doctor papers. Yes. Where, what did they try to do to help you? And did it work? Um, the doctor gave me a prescription to, that is this one, to go and do therapy. But before then, they asked me to do x-ray and MRI on my arm to see how bad it was. Said I have strains. So that is what they did. And then I started the therapy for three months instead of six weeks. Mm -hmm. And did those therapies help you? No, I wasn't better. Because that was from January to March. I wasn't better. 
And so when you came to the Race to Deliver conference with Apostle John Chi, what happened to you during the prayer line? Okay, I was, I happened to have the opportunity to be on the prayer line on Saturday. And then he came and touched my hand, prayed on my hand for a while. But I felt some sharp heat and sensation in my arm when he was praying for me. Yeah. And what happened afterwards? How did you notice that now you can do things and was there pain after that? No. Um, when I got back to Spokane that night, I prayed. They gave us uh, anointing water. So I ministered it and slept. In the morning, the first thing we normally do when we wake up is to wash your face. And I realized I was able to do it without pain. And I was able to even put cream on my face. So I said, oh. Then I said, hey, I'm healed. Am I healed? I'm healed. Am I healed? I was just trying. Come on, let's put our hands together for the Lord. This is amazing. I love how she said that she felt a heat sensation going through, through her arm when he was praying for her. At that moment, Holy Spirit was touching her arm and healing was taking place. And the next morning, she realized there was no pain in her arm whatsoever. Now, are you able now to do the things that you couldn't do? Like simple things like washing your face, carrying bags, lifting a cup. Are you able to do that now? Yes, I do household jobs. I'm able to cook. I'm able to sweep, clean up, do everything. Even lift a bucket of water to water my flowers and things like that in the pot. Come on, let's put our hands together for the Lord Jesus Christ. Our God is a healer God. Amen. Amen. And uh, we thank God for your amazing healing testimony. Would you please share a word of advice for people who might be struggling with some kind of a pain in their body right now? What would you tell them? Brothers and sisters, I want to tell you that though medicine and other things are very important, but Jesus is still in the miracle business. He's still healing. So Jesus is your healer. Jesus is your deliverer. Jesus is your savior. So don't get away from Jesus. He does it freely without even taking insurance or any money. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you so much, Zulaili.